In this lesson, I am going to discuss eigenvalues and eigenvectors of linear transformations. A number lambda is said to be an eigenvalue of a linear operator if there is a non-zero vector x such that t of x is equal to lambda times x. Take note that we can only define eigenvalues for linear operators. Take note also that this is very much similar to our definition of eigenvalues for matrices because for matrices we have ax equals lambda x, correct? Similarly, we say that the vector x is an eigenvector of t corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. And we also define the eigenspace of t corresponding to lambda as follows. This is just the collection of all eigenvectors of t corresponding to your eigenvalue lambda together with the zero vector in v. Let us consider the identity linear operator. Recall that it sends any vector in V to itself. What would be an eigenvalue of this linear operator? Take note that I of V is equal to 1 times V. So therefore, it has an eigenvalue F1. Actually, that is the only eigenvalue. And what would be the eigenvectors? This is true for any vector but remember that for you to be an eigenvector you have to be non-zero so therefore any non-zero vector is an eigenvector of the identity linear operator corresponding to the eigenvalue one what about the zero linear transformation it sends any vector to the zero vector what would be an eigenvalue the zero vector can be written as zero times the vector v. So therefore, the eigenvalue is 0. Just like what we did in example 1, any non-zero vector would be an eigenvector. Let us find the eigenvalues and eigenspaces of this linear transformation. This is the linear transformation induced by A. Since we are solving for the eigenvalues, we want to find all x such that T A of X is equal to lambda X. But T A of X by definition is A times X. What is this saying? This is just telling us that the eigenvalues of this linear transformation are precisely the eigenvalues of your matrix A. We already found the eigenvalues of this matrix in our previous video lecture. The eigenvalues are... 4 and negative 1 and we found that the eigenspace corresponding to 4 is this set and the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue negative 1 is this set. These are the eigenvalues of TA and the corresponding eigenspaces. In general, the eigenvalues of any linear transformation induced by a matrix A are precisely the eigenvalues of that matrix. What we want to do next is to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of any linear operator, not just the linear operator induced by a matrix. How do we do that? What we do is we get an ordered basis for V, and get its matrix representation. Then the eigenvalues of T are precisely the eigenvalues of its matrix representation. Why is that true? If we are looking for the eigenvalues, we want T of X equals lambda X. But recall from our theorem on matrix representation, this would mean that the matrix representation of T with respect to B times the coordinate vector of X with respect to B is equal to the coordinate vector of lambda x with respect to the coordinate vector B. But take note that in this theorem, our matrix representation with respect to B is A. And this coordinate vector can be written as lambda times the coordinate vector of x with respect to B. So therefore, look at this one. Lambda is an eigenvalue of A and the corresponding eigenvectors are this. 
the coordinate vector of x with respect to b. And this x here would be the eigenvector of t. Here are the steps in finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a linear operator. First, we get the matrix representation of T with respect to a convenient ordered basis. When I say convenient, what would that be? I would be using the standard ordered basis. Standard basis because it is very easy to compute for its matrix representation. And then step two, we get the eigenvalues and eigenspaces of this matrix representation. This A here is the matrix representation of T with respect to B. And we retrieve the eigenspace of T by using the eigenvectors of A. For example, the coordinate vector of X is A1 up to AN. And our B here is V1 up to VN then. The eigenvector x would just be a1, v1, a2, v2, and so on up to a n, v n. Let me illustrate that using this example. Suppose that our linear operator sends a vector in R2 to this vector. So first step, our standard basis is 1, 0, 0, 1. We want to get the matrix representation of T with respect to this basis, but that would mean that we have to get first the images of this element. T of 1, 0 is 1, 2 because X is 1 and Y is 0. And then T of 0, 1. X is 0, Y is 1, so we get 4, 3. So therefore, the matrix representation of T with respect to B, that is the coordinate vectors of this, correct? But the coordinate vectors of this with respect to the standard basis are just itself. So we have 1, 2, 0, 1. Let us now get the eigenvalues of this matrix. Let me just call this A. So we have lambda i minus a. This determinant is equal to the determinant of this matrix. This determinant is equal to the square of lambda minus 1. And therefore, we have only one eigenvalue. Lambda equals 1. We now get the corresponding eigenvector. So we replace 1 for lambda. We are solving the system 0, 0, 0, negative 2. This means that x2 is a free variable and x1 is equal to 0. So therefore, the eigenspace of A Corresponding to the eigenvalue 1, I will be using this notation to show that I am referring to the eigenspace of the matrix representation. It is of the form 0R where R is any real number. However, this is now the same as the eigenvector of the linear operator T. Why is that true? Take note that your eigenvector here 0R would be the coordinate vector of x with respect to b. But since your b is your standard basis, then x is also equal to 0r. Next, let us find the eigenvalues and eigenspaces of this linear operator. We take our b to be the standard basis for p2, which is 1x x squared. Let us get the images of these elements. T of 1, so that means A is 1, B and C are all equal to 0. So we get 2 plus 2x minus x squared. Your T of x is equal to B is 1. So we have 1 
plus x. And lastly, t of x squared. a and b are 0, but c is equal to 1. So you have 1 minus 2x minus 2x squared. The matrix representation of t with respect to b would be the coordinate vector of this images with respect to your basis b. So the coordinate vector of t of 1 with respect to b is 2, 2, negative 1. The coordinate vector of t of x is 1, 1, 0. And the coordinate vector of t of x squared is 1, negative 2, negative 2. Again, let me just call this a. We are now ready to compute the eigenvalues of a. We form the determinant of lambda i minus a. I will be using the cofactor expansion along the third row. This determinant is equal to plus minus plus, so that's 1 times the determinant of, delete this and this. We have negative 1, negative 1, lambda minus 1, 2. And then for lambda plus 2, what is the sign? Plus minus plus minus plus, so that's plus lambda plus 2 times the determinant of, delete this and this. This is equal to negative 2 plus lambda minus 1 plus lambda plus 2 times lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 1 is lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2 minus 2. This is equal to negative 3 plus lambda plus lambda plus 2 times Lambda squared minus 3 lambda is lambda times lambda minus 3. Notice that I have a common factor of lambda minus 3. So I get 1 plus lambda times lambda plus 2, which is equal to. And this is equal to lambda plus 1 squared. We want to set this to 0 and therefore the eigenvalues are 3 and negative 1. I will leave it up to you to verify that this eigenspace is equal to the span of 5, 6, negative 1 and this eigenspace is equal to the span of negative 1. To 1. How do we now get the eigenspace of t corresponding to your eigenvalue 3? All you have to do is to write this as a coordinate vector of your eigenvector. And remember that your b is 1x x squared. So therefore, 5, 6, negative 1. So therefore, your x is equal to 5 plus 6x plus x squared. So this is now the span of 5 plus 6x plus x squared. Similarly, the eigenspace of t corresponding to the eigenvalue negative 1 is equal to the span of negative 1 plus 2x plus x squared. For our last example, let us find the eigenvalues and eigenspaces of this linear operator. First, our ordered basis here is the standard basis. This is your E11, E21, E12, and E22. First, let us get t of e11. t of e11, your a is 1 and the rest is 0. So we get 
1, negative 2, and 0, 0. What about T of E to 1? For T of E to 1, your C is 1. So you get negative 1, 2, 0, 0. T of E, 1, 2. That means B is 1. So you get 0 on this column and 1, 2 here. And lastly, T of E2, 2, two, you have D equals 1. Get 1, negative 2. And 1, 2. What is now our matrix representation with respect to B? We just get the coordinate vector of this with respect to B. What is that coordinate vector? It's equal to 1, negative 2, 0, 0. Take note that it's as if you are just adding this column here. Again, because... This matrix is equal to 1 times E11 minus 2 times E21 and then plus 0 E12 plus 0 E22. So for the second column, you have negative 1, 2, 0, 0. For the third column, you have 0, 0, 1, 2. And lastly, you have 1, negative 2, 1, 2. Again, I am turning this 2 by 2 matrix into a column by putting the second column here at the end of the first column. Let me now call this A. Let us now compute the eigenvalues of this. We get should get the determinant of lambda i minus A. I will get the cofactor expansion along the fourth row. For this one, we have plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So negative 2 becomes positive 2 times the determinant of this matrix. Then for lambda minus 2, it will be now plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, times the determinant of this matrix. Notice that for this matrix over here, I have a row containing exactly one non-zero entry, so therefore I get the matrix expansion along this row so we get two times the sign here would be positive so this is still negative one times the determinant of this matrix similarly for this one i will use the cofactor expansion along row three Don't forget to copy lambda minus 1 and then get the determinant of this matrix. Take note that these two determinants are the same. I can now factor this out. Then I have negative 2 plus lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 1. This is lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2 minus 2. So that's just lambda squared minus 3 lambda. This is another lambda squared minus 3 lambda. So therefore, this is lambda squared times lambda minus 3 and therefore our eigenvalues are 0 and 3. I will leave it up to you to verify that the eigenspace 
of A corresponding to the eigenvalue 0 is equal to the span of 1, 1, 0 and negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. I use this notation to indicate that this is the eigenspace corresponding to A. Similarly, you can verify that the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue 3 is given by the span of negative 1 half 1, 0, 0. How do we now get the eigenspace of T? Take note that this vector 1, 1, 0, 0 is the coordinate vector of your eigenvector corresponding to B. So therefore, this x here is equal to 1, 1, 0, 0. Take note that I am just doing the opposite of what we did earlier when we get the coordinate basis. I am putting this here as a second column. And for this one, this becomes the matrix negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. Similarly, for the eigenspace of T corresponding to 3, this becomes the span of the matrix negative 1 half 1, 0, 0.